Welcome to our next lesson in MX Graph Made Simple. Today we're going to speak about uh, complexity management um, and one specific method for dealing with complexity in your graphs. If you look at the manual uh, that comes with MX Graph, uh, you'll see under the last um, title, it speaks about complexity management and it offers three possible methods to deal with complexity in your graph. Uh, now obviously uh, there's various reasons why you would want to deal with complexity in your graph as described in the manual as well. Um, and two of them are, uh, one is for performance. Um, so if there's areas of the graph that you don't need to display um, through some of the methods of complexity management you don't have to display them and that obviously speeds up uh, the processing of the graph. The more obvious reason is to make the visualization of your graph uh, more readable. If there are too many vertices being displayed at once oftentimes it can make it difficult to understand the relationship between those vertices and through complexity management you can make things much more understandable. Today we're going to take a very simple example. We have seven vertices. Three of them are unrelated to each other. We have one large vertex which acts as a container to three smaller vertices. As we've described in a previous lesson, we're able to group vertices by placing vertices within another vertex. In this particular case, the parent vertex is visible, but you can make it invisible as well, and that would group the three vertices together, but, um, but you wouldn't see how they're grouped. In this case, we're showing you in order to make it simpler to understand what we're doing. What we're going to try to achieve today is to make it so that when I click on the container vertex, I want to be able to drill down into this vertex to see what it contains. So let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to add a listener. In order to make a vertex or any cell do something, when I click on it, the way that's done is by adding a listener. Here's how it's done in MX Graph. First, we're going to add listener to graph, and it's going to take as arguments first the thing to listen for, which is mxevent.click. You can find more about that in the documentation under MX Events. And the second argument is going to be what should happen when we click. And we're going to have a function, and this function is going to take as arguments sender and event. Now let's describe what this function does. The first thing we're going to do is to find out about the cell that we've clicked on. So we're going to create a variable called cell, and we're going to make it equal to event.getProperty cell. And we're going to say, and here I'm going to skip a couple lines of code, we're going to get back to it soon. We're going to say that if cell is not null, meaning if it exists, and we're going to take out the else for right now, then let's have it do the following activity. What's the activity we're going to ask it to do is graph.entergroup cell. We're going to ask it to enter the cell that was clicked. And let's click a cell. Oh, we went into that cell, and since it has no children, it gave us a blank graph. Let's try that in the container cell, because this container uh, is actually a parent for these three vertices. 
And there we go. If you click into this container cell, all that's visible now are the three vertices which it contains. But now we have a problem, which is the only way to get back up to the higher level is by refreshing the page, which obviously doesn't make sense for many reasons, not the least of which if you had gone uh, deeper and deeper, if you had gone two or three levels in, then refreshing the page would bring you to the top level and you'd have no way to go back one level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a button that lets us go back. And this is how I'm going to do it. The first thing I'm going to do is create an image. Now you don't have to do this in a variable, but for various reasons for me, I felt it was a little easier. So I did variable image and I set the address of that image. And now I'm going to insert a vertex into the graph. So graph.insertVertex. And I'm going to insert that vertex into the default parent because it's going to be not into a specific parent but into the parent that's open at that time. And I'm going to give uh, a title of back and a value of back. And I'm going to set it to 0, 0. That's the x and y coordinates. 40, 40 is going to be the size. And as we've described earlier, in order to use an image, we have to give it a style. And we're going to say the shape of this vertex is the image, which means it's not going to show us anything but the image. And the image that we're choosing is something called image. Now, the rest of these are details. Um, some of them are important. Some of them are not important but none of them are really important to the specifics of the lesson that we're learning today. And so now we should have a vertex that is an image uh, and is going to have the text back um, in our graph. But that's only going to happen when we enter the group, meaning to say we're not going to see it on the initial page. And we reload it. And we haven't seen any difference because we're on the top page. But now when we drill down into container, we have this arrow uh, telling us that we can go back up one level. But if I click on it, not only does nothing happen, but the wrong thing happens. And that's why I had an if-else statement. And I said that if cell.value equals back. Let's see how that works. And it looks like it's not working. Let's go see why. Of course, it's because we forgot to put else before if. Let's save it. Try it out again, drill down, click on it, and there we go. It brought us back up to the original level. The only problem is, is we're stuck with the back button. So of course we need to remove that. And we do that by saying graph.getModel.remove and the cell that we had originally clicked on. And that should be a completed project. Let's just try it out. Reload it. Drill down into our container. Click our back button. And it works.
Let's drill down into our container. And sure enough, we have the back button. Let's click on it. And it looks like it's not working. Let's go see why. Of course, it's because we forgot to put else before if. Let's save it. Try it out again. And drill down. Click on it. And there we go, it brought us back up to the original level. The only problem is, <coughs> the only problem is, is we're stuck with the back button. So of course we need to remove that. And we do that by saying graph dot get model dot remove and the cell that we had originally clicked on. And that should be a completed project. Let's just try it out. Reload it. Drill down into our container. Click our back button. And it works. We could drill down into any one of them. Click the back button and it works. Let's see if we drill down another level. Click back. And that doesn't work. We'll have to figure that one out later. Now I'm not sure if I've thought this one completely through well enough. We probably have to uh, 